Well, hello everyone. I hope that everyone has had a wonderful weekend. Our days, I tell you, they seem to be more busy and more full of what we need to do on the weekends than it is during the week. But I hope that all of you have a very good day and I hope you will want to join me for a little bit of mine and I'll talk to all of you in just a little while. I just wanted to take a moment and ask if any of you get to the point during this season of the year where you begin to feel overwhelmed because that is how I am feeling. Just a little overwhelmed at everything that I still need to accomplish. And so what I've decided to, to do, despite, as you can see behind me, I have done no more canning and I have done no more baking this weekend. What I've decided to do is I'm going to enjoy the day. I am going to enjoy the day with my church family. I am going to enjoy the day with my husband. And I am going to enjoy the day with the Lord. So I hope that you also will take a moment regardless of the amount of things and stuff that each one of us believe that we need to accomplish before that big day arrives and just enjoy the moment because none of us are guaranteed even our next breath. So what we have decided to do is we are going to go and once it's dark outside, drive around and look at all the beautiful lights on the homes. So I hope that you enjoy some of these beautiful magical scenes that we get to enjoy. And I will talk to you in just a little while. today's devotion, we will be reading from Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no name under heaven that has been given among men by which to be saved. Jesus was born into a culture in which names were filled with hopes and expectations. In the days of when the Bible was being written, the Israelites often chose names for their babies based on the child's character or appearance, like Esau, that meant hairy, or an incident at their birth, or on some hope or a prayer of a parent. Even everyday objects like Tamar, which meant palm tree, and Tabitha, which meant gazelle. When Jesus called Simon into ministry, he renamed him Peter, Greek for stone. When Jesus met Saul on the road to Damascus, he called him Paul, meaning small or humble. God deliberately placed many names in the Bible that tells us about Jesus, and they allow us to know him more fully. 
only Jesus can simultaneously be the timid, submissive lamb and the mighty, conquering lion. And the mission of Jesus is communicated through the names given to him in scripture. And what we understand about his name is meant to help us know him. So this season, as we focus on the birth of Jesus, we'll hear the name Emmanuel, God with us. Yet, he is so much more. Christ. Jesus is called the Christ, the title which means Messiah or Savior. God. Jesus is called God in several passages in the Bible. Along with his sinless life, miracles, resurrection from the dead, his claims to be God, stand firm. Lord. In the New Testament, this term is used as a salutation to honor a man of distinction. The disciples use this term to salute Jesus as their teacher and their master. Word. This title was used by the Apostle John to describe the mission of Jesus. The title states Jesus is Godhead an eternal, absolute deity. Messiah, the long-awaited anointed one who would deliver Israel. Jesus came to deliver mankind from sin and death. Alpha and Omega. These two characters were the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. This descriptive title expresses the eternal nature of God, the beginning and the end. Savior, Jesus is the person who rescues mankind from an eternity separated from God. Redeemer, one who frees or delivers another from difficulty, danger, or bondage, usually by the payment of a ransom price. In the New Testament, Jesus is viewed as the ultimate Redeemer who gave his life as a ransom. Light of the world, Jesus is the person who brings true knowledge of God. Those who reject this light bring judgment upon themselves. Lamb of God. This title refers to the Old Testament's sacrificial system where God accepted the blood of animals as atonement for sin. And Jesus' blood made atonement for sin. Ruler of creation. Christ existed before for the creation of the world, and he is sovereign over it. Mediator. Because Jesus is fully God, he can represent God to man. Because he is fully man, Jesus can represent man to God. Reconciliation is possible. Bread of life. Jesus is the one and only supplier of true spiritual nourishment. The way the truth, the life. Jesus is the only way to heaven, the only source of truth, and the foundation of all life. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And this Advent season and beyond, I hope that you are able to experience the beauty of Jesus in new ways through understanding and worshiping him by his name. God bless, and I will talk to you tomorrow.